Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar here, the old photographer guy and ex-British Army. <laughs> Here's a story I'm going to tell you. I've got no props this time because it happened so long ago. Um, everything's been sort of dumped and destroyed. I haven't got any props to show you. But it's a story about how I was kidnapped and taken on a smash and grab raid in a jeweler's shop using my own car. When I was doing press photography in Barking in Essex in England, this was about 1961, and I was working with Breeder Studios, who had, was a partnership, and they had the um, work to do the Barking advertiser photography. They used to get seven shillings and sixpence for every picture they had in. <laughs> Anyway, they took me on, and mostly I did darkroom work, but I had at the time my Zeiss Contacts Model 3, which I got from Berlin, with a 1.5 Sonar lens. I've told you this before, before I got the Pentax S3. And they let me go out on some jobs, so starting me on doing local press work. Well, one job I was sent to was a Mayan Baker's Family Fun Day, the main bakers was a chemical company in Dagenham. We made famous Pro Micro and Amfix, those chemicals. Well, I had to go to the fun day, and during the time there was a big black storm cloud came over. I took some pictures, and I also had with me a Zeiss Contaflex because it had a between the lens shutter, and I could use filling flash with it. So that was the Contaflex belonging to the, the partners of Breeder Studios. Clive Simpson was one and David, I can't remember his other name, was the other partner who ran Breeder Studios. They gave me this Zeiss contact. So I had two cameras in my car and my car was an Austin A35 P Green which cost me 420 quid. And that's just after I passed my driving test. So I w went to the Mayan Bakers Fun Day and took these pictures with this big black cloud coming over. And on the way back to develop the films in the house where the darkroom was housed and the Barking Advertiser office was in Barking near the station, I stopped outside because it's pelting down with rain. I thought, oh, I don't want to get all the cameras wet. So I put them in the bottom of the car in the back seat on the floor so they didn't fall down. I was sitting in the car and suddenly I saw two blokes walking up the road and they was trying the handles of some cars. I thought, oh, what's happening there? And they came over to me. They saw me sitting there in the pouring rain. And suddenly one of them pulled the door open and he says, um, how do you drive this thing? I said, what do you mean? I said, I, uh, do you want a lift? It's rain. I'll give you a lift somewhere. No, we know where we're going to go. I thought, that's strange. And they said, come out a bit, otherwise we'll kill you. So I thought, oh my God. So they pulled me out and then they pushed me in the back of the car. And the cameras was on the floor down below. They hadn't seen the cameras. And one of them, the small one, got in the car, driving seat. I said, oh, I said, no, I'll, I'll drive you. No, we, we know where we're going to go. How do you drive this thing? And my Austin A35, my lovely 420 pound car. Oh Christ. And he turned the engine on. And I said, well, you've got to turn the engine on and put, put the foot on the clutch and then put it into first gear. <laughs> and he, he did that and it, it went crack, crack, crack. And I, I thought, he's damaging my car. What are they doing? And the big bloke sat in the front with him. And suddenly he managed to get off in first gear. Then he managed to get it into second gear. And we're driving along out through uh, the road where the Barking Advertiser office was into the town centre, short distance, and up Ripple Road. Yeah, that's right, Ripple Road, Barking. And it was in second gear, racing the engine. I thought, What's happening? I, I kept saying, Let me drive you, I'll take you, and I'll give you a lift. No, be quiet, I will kill you. And suddenly they stopped on the right hand side of the road against the traffic. I thought, outside the jeweler's shop. And the big bloke got out and he went up to the window of this jeweler's shop and booted it in with his boot. 
and a little Jewish jeweler came running and it said, Oi vey, oi vey, oi vey, you know. <laughs> and the big bloke punched him in the stomach. <sighs> and he went, fell down like that on the floor, the poor little Jewish jeweler. Oi vey. <laughs> and then the big bloke reached in and he started grabbing out loads of trays of rings and stuff and pushed them through the door where I was sitting. I thought, oh my God, what's happening here? All this jewellery coming through, a load of old rubbish, I thought it most it was. And then after he got several trays and bits and bobs of jewellery, he jumped in the car and they roared off around the back street in second gear again. He couldn't get it into higher gear. I thought, what's happening? What's happening? And I started to get a bit scared. <laughs> sitting in the back box with all his jewellery and suddenly he roared round a road uh, it's at Paul's Road I think it was in Barking and as he came round the corner they hit a wall where the river Thames um, estuary or not the estuary wherever Thames um, bit is in Barking there a little offshoot of it and it hit the wall and it went bang my lovely 420 pounds car hit the wall, knocked it down, big hole in the wall, my car was up in amongst the bricks and it nearly went into the water, the little river outflow connecting with the river Thames down below. I was sitting in the car, oh my god, and all this poor blinking car all damaged. So they got out and they ran off, I thought, leaving me amongst all the jewellery. I thought, oh god, what's going to happen? So I managed to get out and I it was still raining, summer storm, pouring with rain. I thought I better do something. I took a picture of me crash car. And I always remember it was one thirtieth of a second F2 because <laughs> I only had pan F film loaded. So I stood by the car and all this jewellery and suddenly an ice cream van came round and I stopped, waved I said, help, help. I said, I've been kidnapped. Help me. And he, he took one look and he roared off and suddenly a double-decker red bus came around and I waved at him. I said, help, help. I said, look, I've been kidnapped and taken on a raid. And I said, I'm the, I'm the driver. And I said, it was my car. The, so the um, p conductor looked at He said, all right, mate. He says, hop on and we'll take you around to the cop shop. So I hopped on the running board of the bus. It was a big double-decker bus. It was empty. And they roared off and they went up St Paul's Road. <laughs> they didn't go up Ripple Road. They went around the back streets and I could see people looking out of their windows. What's this double-decker bus coming up the back streets? And it stopped outside Barking Police Station. And I, here, here we are. Okay, mate. Th I said, thank God for that. And as I was there, the policemen getting on all their coats and they're getting the car out. And I ran in the police station and I said, I, I said, help, I've been involved in a the, in the smash and grab race. So they said, who are you? I said, I'm the car owner. I said, they took me hostage. Oh, where is it? I said, down by St Paul's Road, nearly in the river. Oh, right, one minute. I mean, they took me in a police car down to where the car was, and it's still there, and all the jewellery is still spread around. So I said, that York vehicle? I said, yes. And the policeman bent and pulled out the wing of it, because it where the wing of the car was all smashed in. And they hitched it up to the back of a police car and towed it back to the yard and took me back in a police car. And they looked around and picked up bits of jewellery, if I can remember rightly. And then they started interviewing me about what, who I was and what happened. So I told them the story. And then in the meantime, after a while, in the meantime, they was writing everything down. I managed to get outside and go to a public phone box and put me two pence in. It was Tuttons then. Never had mobile phones. They weren't invented. And I phoned my friend Norman Andrews from Barking Photographic Society. And I said, Norman, I said, can you get in contact with the Barking advertiser, Ron Copping, that was the editor's name. I said, and tell him there's a big story here. And I've been involved in the smash and grab raid. All right, he says, we'll see what we can do. So when the police finished with me, taking statements, I had rushed round to the Barking Advertiser office and they'd opened it up specially and Ron Coppin turned up. I had to tell him all the story. Oh my God. And they started writing it and sending it off to the national newspapers. 
So then it came out in the news of the world, a story, and it was on BBC Radio about how I was kidnapped and taken on a smash and grab raid. And then I remember the Daily Express got in contact with me and um, a bloke came, a reporter and a photographer came to my mum's house in Wallin Road, East Ham, where we lived. And the, the guy had a rolly flex in the little case and he took out this rolly flex and took a picture of me by window light, no flash. And I was going like that, all sort of worried because my lovely car was all smashed up. Oh my God, 420 pound that car was. And it was in the yard of the police station at Barking. I forget how I got home. I think I had to walk home from Barking to East Ham, about a mile and a bit. And nobody helped me. But then, after it came out on the news, the police contacted me again and they said, um, I've got to go to prison with them. Oh my God. Oh, I said, we're going to look at some prisoners. I said, oh, are I going in, in a police car with you? I said, oh no, we're going on the train. We can't afford to use the police car. So <laughs> we got a ticket. He got a ticket from Barking up to London. And we went out to New Scotland Yard there on the embankment. And they took me up into the room and I had to look through albums and albums of faces of prisoners. And I thought to myself, that looks like one of them. And they checked up, no, he's still in prison. It couldn't have been him. So I looked through loads of faces and no, I couldn't find them. And they said, well, any, anything strange about them? I said, well, what, they smelt of horses, I think I, I, think I said. Uh, they smelt like horses. I bet you they were travellers. And they was encamped up in Barking somewhere, but that's the only thing. One of them had a handkerchief across his face, a little weasley one, like a try to mask himself, but the big bloke didn't bother. So they then they I had to go to um that's what I have to go to prison afterwards. We went to a prison, I think it was Wandsworth, and there they did take me in a police car. And we get inside this prison. And they have them prisoners lined up in a yard and him in dark blue boiler suits. And you had to walk up and down this line looking at all these prisoners. I've never been in a prison before because I've never been in trouble with the police. <laughs> and as I walked past one, I said, grass, grass, you know, that's a slang word for an informer. I thought he was going to hit me, but luckily the prison guards were there. And me and the jeweller, had to look, that's what, they brought the little Jewish jeweller up as well, he looked up and no, they weren't there. And um, so it transpired, they never caught them, and my car had to be totally repaired, and the engine had to be done, and um, it cost a lot of money on the insurance. First of all, the insurance weren't going to pay out until I, I had got some advice and told them it's been in all the national newspapers, and stuff and then they agreed to pay out for repairs but the poor car was never the same afterwards and it, it emitted smoke and I sold it for 100 quid to an unsuspecting bloke down the road <laughs> poor blinking a Austin A35 that's one of the dangers of being a local press photographer they never caught them load of old jewellery I never found any jewellery in my car they, the police swept, swept it up, I don't know what they did with it all, but I didn't get any, I didn't really want any, but at least I was safe, and they never noticed the cameras that was in the bottom of my car. I had to take pictures of the route, and the pictures of the jeweller's shop, and it was all the front page of the national, um, not the national, the local barking advertiser, and there's me in the Daily Express looking all worried like this. <laughs> But sorry, I've got nothing to show you at the moment, because that's 1961. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed that story of how I was kidnapped and taken on a raid in my own car. Thanks for watching, folks. That was a little story time. <laughs>